Okay, page 98, Simon Zayin. So yesterday we had the introduction that the Ramchal gave, which was very deep. It was about how we don't understand anything about the essence of God. We only understand in certain ways that He relates to us. But His essence, we know zero. We know nothing. So that was the Ramchal. So it's very important for us to know for the rest of this uh, Sefer. Other things we've learned until now is that the world has a purpose. It has a plan. There is a place the world is going. The place the world is going is when the world, when humanity will recognize that there is one God and He is controlled, which is known as Yichud Hashem. Obviously, we are currently not in that stage. We're in the stage of Helam HaYichud, where Hashem is hiding His oneness. And that's what we were davening for on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, that Hashem should reveal His oneness. And uh, Sukkot has a lot to do with that also. And now as we go back into the uh, regular time of the year, we don't have as much built-in inspiration. We'll uh, continue to see what the Ramchal has to say about this. But now we're going to get really into the kishkas of the Sefer and see really uh, where the world is going. He's going to describe in detail how it's going to get there, the different time periods. Because so far we've learned uh, in general that there's two time periods. There's a time period where Hashem hides himself and a time period where he reveals himself. And we're obviously in the time period where he's hiding himself. So let's talk about that. Okay. Amr HaNeshama says the Neshama, Shamati l'musiyashrim hadvarim alai he says, I heard what you said, I agree with it, it makes a lot of sense that it's impossible to know all of these things without knowing that there is a, uh, that there is a God who is all-powerful, there's nothing that could force him to do anything, he's all-powerful. And without this knowledge about the existence and the power and the supremacy of God, there is no way to clarify any of these um, questions and uh, things that I was bothered with originally. So the first thing to know, to answer all those questions, remember he originally asked about uh, Sharva owners, reward and punishment, how, how all that works, and uh, other, other questions. But if we don't know that there's an all-supreme God, then we cannot answer any of that. Okay. Memchas. Amr HaSeichel. And remember, this is a conversation. This whole book is a conversation between the Neshama and the Seichel. The Neshama is the one asking the questions, and the Seichel is the one who is responding to the questions. Amr HaSeichel. Hazman HaRishon Sheishlon Levayrata. Now, the first time period, which we have to explain now, Huzman Hisalam Yehudo Yisbarach Kayom It's the time in human history where Hashem hides himself, like we are currently in now. Who closed Man HaVodas Adam, And this is the time period where man has to work. Serve Hashem. Kemoshebana, like we explained. Right, we said that there's two things, that Hashem created man to receive reward. So that means that man has free will and has to choose to do good as opposed to evil. That's one aspect of it. And there's another aspect that through man's actions, it will bring about the revelation of Hashem's oneness. So again, we, we use this the parable mushal before. That it's not just like Hashem put us in the world and it's like a video game, it's like Donkey Kong, and you have to score as many points as you can before you die, and the more points you get, then that's like the better, higher you get in heaven, like you're like first place, second place. That's, there is an aspect of reward and punishment, but there's another aspect. Hashem put us in this world, so the world we're in now should become rectified. That we're not just here as individuals to receive our personal reward, but we're here also as a group, as a human species, to bring about the... You know, uh, the revelation of Hashem's oneness. And we also said that if humans don't do it, then Hashem is going to force it, force that to happen. And we're going to discuss, probably not get to it this week, how Hashem forces it along. But once we know these principles, it actually helps us a lot to understand many events that happen in human history. Okay. Hashem could have made all of His creations complete and perfect had He wanted to. And Hashem could have made everything perfect and only good. Hashem could have made such a world. Everything's good. Everything's just rainbows and lollipops and everything's perfect all the time. It's going to be awesome. With no evil and with no, nothing lacking. But since Hashem wanted the world to exist in the way which we have described, meaning that there is reward and punishment, that we can earn our own reward, and that the world has a goal that we have to bring about. It's rectification. He made it in a new way. He didn't make it in a perfect, he didn't make the world perfect. 
My the tzricha lebriyasa latay lahem zechus schar tov ba'achrisam, but who darach tov ba'raus schar ba'onish. He made it in a way that you could earn reward, and the way to do that. Uh, and uh, created good and evil, and reward and punishment. Since Hashem wants us to earn our own reward, He had to give us free will. Free will is only possible if there's evil in the world. Now we've discussed, uh, we discussed Thursday also, that the level of evil changes by, based on our actions. The biggest example was Adam and Rishon, Adam and Eve. Right before they sinned, evil, the drive to do evil was external. That was represented by the snake, the Nachash. After Adam ate from the tree of knowledge, evil became part of him, and the entire creation changed to the point where evil grew uh, quite a bit. And now the whole purpose of creation is just to get back to that state of Adam before he sinned. According to this uh, way, Good and evil are equal in this world. And good awaits the good people, just like bad awaits the evil people. And sometimes, like we just mentioned, the creation could get messed up. The destruction could happen. Right? If hum- Hashem gives permission, or gives the ability for human beings to choose good and evil. Now, if they choose evil, that has consequences. They increase evil in the world, not only in themselves, but in the entire world. The prime example being, uh, being Adam and Eve, like we just mentioned. And sometimes, however, the world gets rectified. When people do the right thing, that fixes up the world. Hashem makes, Hashem allows the Satan, the evil inclination, the Yitzhahara, to prosecute those who do bad and to destroy, to cause destruction for those that deserve it. And we, that's why we find in the world that there, there are Umas Ha'ilam and there are those that uh, bow down to idols. And every other evil that we find in the world. Right? How, how, how could the Nazis exist if there's a God? Because God allows evil people to do what they want because He gave us free will. That's why there is a Taliban. And that's why there is every other evil group of people or evil individuals that exist in the world because Hashem allows them to exist. Now, there's obviously going to be limitations. He's not going to let them destroy the world in the end. But He allows them to exist uh, because there is free will. And human beings, He does not stop that free will, whether it's for good or for evil. Now, on all of these evils, Sha'alehem bo haftachos hanavim all of Hashem, we say the, the, the promises of the prophets, la'avira mina olam la'asalabu, eventually, all of this evil is going to be destroyed. Ke'inyin shinemar, like it says, the, uh, I'll remove false gods will be wiped out. And the spirit of impurity I will remove from the world. Death will be gone from the world. There will no longer cause destruction on my holy mountain. And that's what we were davening for in Rosh Hashanah, in Yom Kippur, that when Mashiach comes, we say Mashiach, right? You sing all the songs. Mashiach, Mashiach, Mashiach. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. What are we davening for all the time? What are we davening three times a day in Shimon Esther, that we want to go back to Jerusalem and have Mashiach come, the Messiah? What's the whole point? The whole point is, is that when that happens, God is going to destroy all evil, and the world will recognize that there is one God, and there will be just goodness in the world. Because now we are in this state of concealment of God's goodness and, uh, and perfection, when Mashiach comes, that will be revealed. Ba'alpi haderech. And this way it says, Hakobi shemaim chutz miyar shemaim. Everything is from heaven except from fear, except for fear of, uh, for fear of heaven. What does that mean? Baruch Hu wrote, so that means that Hashem is in charge of everything. Hashem controls everything. Right? Whether I'm, God forbid, someone's driving home and gets in an accident or you know, there's going to be a storm today, or a million other things in the world. A person's parnasa, no control over it, really. No control. Everything is by Hashem. There's one thing a human being has control on, what control of, whether to do good or evil. You have a choice. Am I going to do a mitzvah here? Am I going to do an avera? I have an opportunity to speak Lashon Hara. Am I going to do it or not? That is the only thing that a human being has control, is to choose to do right or wrong, to fear Hashem. Everything else that happens to a person, we like to think we're in control, but really, we're not. We have no power over it whatsoever. So the only thing that we have, but he's pointing out here, he's bringing it here to show us that we have free will. Every human being has uh, free will. 
שאין הקדוש ברוך הוא רוצה לעקב כלום ביד בני אדם, אם רוצים לחלק המעשה, אם השם doesn't want to stop a person if uh, he wants to mess up uh, his, his deeds. If a person wants to become a Russia and become evil and destroy the world, Hashem's going to let him do it. In fact, it says that the, per, uh, the way a person tries to go, Hashem helps him go there. If a person tries to be good, Hashem's going to help him be good. If a person tries to be evil, Hashem's going to help him be evil. Maybe if he's a tzaddik, Hashem will try to uh, stop him sometimes. That's good. That's a schuss you have. That sometimes you try to do an avera and Hashem could uh, stop you. You know, if you maybe have a merit for that. But Hashem doesn't uh, necessarily, Hashem doesn't disallow somebody if he wants to become a rasha. And that's why we have so many, so much evil, and the world got messed up so much from the day that Hashem created the world. There's no rest for the righteous in this world. Because the evil of men is very great. And Satan, the Eight Sahara, is prosecuting us at every moment. And Hashem is specific in the judgment of the righteous. Like a uh, like a hair's breadth, meaning he's very particular. The more righteous you get, the more Hashem is going to uh, to judge you more severely. Meaning you you should know better. You you grew up. You went to yeshiva for 13 years. You know that you shouldn't be doing that. Versus somebody who doesn't know any better. Right, and this is the way that Hashem did it based on uh, hiding, his, uh, hiding himself. And it's only dependent on Hashem hiding his goodness, quote-unquote. Right, because if Hashem wanted to, if Hashem wanted to right now, He could reveal to the entire world that He is in control. And that uh, there's Yichud Hashem, and that there's only one God. Hashem could do that right now if He wanted to, but He wants there to be a process of revelation through human history. So now, and that the human being should have a schus and bring it about, so that we uh, we have this um, reality now of where Hashem is uh, is hiding Himself. I shouldn't say I don't. Yeah, okay. Right, so let's actually let's stop here, and He's going to go now next week and the weeks after. He's going to go into more detail exactly the different ways that Hashem operates to bring that state, the desired state, where Hashem is just revealing His shlemus, His completion, He's going to discuss at length how that happens. But He's pointing out that now we're obviously in a state where Hashem is hiding Himself, and, you know, the question that people ask, you know, how could the Holocaust happen? I mean, on a very basic level, I mean, the response that people say is, how could men have let it happen? Which is true, because Hashem allows evil people to do evil. And that's how we created the world. Human beings have free will, and he doesn't stop and say, you know, he doesn't prevent it from happening. If a person wants to be evil, God will let him do that. And that's what free will means. So, so, I, so, okay, so I, I